Hey YouTube, it's Billy AZ Prospector back here with another video. Today I'm bringing you my haul from the Denver Gym and Mineral Show that I had an opportunity to stop by as I was doing some business work up in that area. We actually um, got done a little bit earlier and had a chance, this, that was happening at the same time frame, so I took a, a minute to stop by over there and I threw up that video a couple days ago, so make sure you go check that out first and then you can come check this haul video out and I can show you what I got. So as you know, in, in coins, I'm also into a lot of other things revolving around mining and uh, the mining industry. So here I have three different boxes. Uh, the first one that I'm looking at here are the two ones on the lower. They're actually um, from a company that was established out of New York. So on the West Coast, when, when out of California, you had um, companies out west that were really just killing it out west. Um, but back east, you had this company, which is going to be known as the MC, or MC Manufacturing Company, which is actually the, the metallic cap manufacturing company. So that's what these two are here. And what I'll show you is they're just little tin cans that blasting caps were held in for dynamite. And they were... Um, you know, they had the chargers inside of here, and they kept them in these tins just to keep them dry, keep them from getting uh, moisture in them to preventing the the blasting caps from going bad for the dynamite. But the little cans are quite collectible because, you know, ones like this from back east, they were shipped all the way out back west. But, I mean, this is early 1800s and into the, into the 1900s when... Um, the company actually sold off to, to DuPont, so DuPont later on took that over. You'll see DuPont blasting caps, and DuPont was in, into a lot of things. It was, it was uh, quite interesting if you look up the history of DuPont. They're into all kinds of chemicals and stuff now, but they did uh, a lot of things. So here's one of them. You can see here, established in 1876. Just kind of a, a really cool tin box. On the back of the box, though, you'll see here, Established again, 1876, silver metal. Not 100% sure what the difference was where you had the silver metal and then, or the silver cross, and then you had the gold cross. Um, so here you can actually see the gold medal, and the, the difference is quite a bit in the price. It's about double the price for the gold medal boxes. And DuPonts generally run uh, a little bit, quite a bit less, just because these are a lot older. You can actually see the um, antiquing going on within the paint on the box so it's quite old same thing on this one inside it was just uh, you had like a fibrous fibrous um, type cloth in there to absorb any kind of liquids if or moisture in there with the cap and then same thing with that on the bottom is on the bottom of the tin it's uh, it's actually scribed on the back there and you can see the difference in the price of one of these these uh quite rare because a lot of times they didn't really keep stuff like this at mines they just throw this in mine dumps um so if you are to f you know able to find one from the mine dumps they're typically dented cracked smashed and so quite collectible in these ones later here come the uh the etna powder and I want to say this is maybe a, even a subs, um, subsidy group, I guess, if you will, or a, an extension of the manufacturing. They were, yeah, they were detonators for the Lion brand, and they were the number five. And I'm actually looking at a website. Yeah, this was anything from 1900 to 1914 is when these were actually put out for mines. And quite rare as well um, to have one of these ones. And I was uh, pretty honored to find this one. I got actually all three of these from the same person. Matter of fact, I'll give a shout out. Rocks of Ages. If you guys are interested in any mining memorabilia or anything like that, Rocks of Ages. Um, shout out to them. Husband and wife team. They were out in New Mexico. I think they just recently moved to Indiana. Um, really knowledgeable though. A lot of books I get from them just to learn about uh, old mining history. A lot of mines that are closed down now that you can't even get into so a lot of neat history there so there's those and bear with me here because i kind of got a bag full of goodies here 
Another thing I've gotten into is um, the the headlamps. So a long time ago, you went from carbide lamps. Um, before carbide lamps, you had something like this. And what this was, it looks like a little oil can, right? Where you would pour, you know, maybe oil out of. It's got this little clip on the top, though. And this would actually, inside of here, it would actually have the same kind of... Um, stuff you have here some kind of fiber of, of sorts that could stay lit like a wick and it would be filled with some kind of oil to keep the the oil or in the rag kind of lit maybe gasoline or whatever kind of flammable that you could use to to keep the the wick full of that material to keep burning and then what the miners would do this came after candlestick so way before that maybe with some coal miners gold miners I have some old photos of miners that uh, still had some candlesticks, which were quite interesting because, man, that would have been a tough job. Uh, but something like this came out, and you can actually see here, this is something Parsons. I'm going to have to do some research on that. This actually came from Parsons, Pennsylvania, so chances are this one was most likely used either... I don't even know if this was used, but it looks like it would have probably been down in the coal mines, something like that. Uh, gold mines anyhow what they would do is they would light the end of this and they would simply clip this on the front of their hat and that would be the light given off for them to walk down the mine shafts and uh, tunnels to see what they were doing to do their work so i thought that was quite interesting you don't really see a whole lot of those if you're ever in an in a antique store and you can pick these up for under a hundred dollars i'd say buy it all day long because um, easily able to turn these and flip these because they're they're a lot older than a carbide lamp that you would get to uh, put carbide in and then, and then light the front of that with a, like a little like a lighter uh, flint but these are quite collectible so just some knowledge on those guys if you ever see any of those pick those up so there was that let's see what else here um, some of the minerals I got into so this is actually kind of neat. This is uh, something I got for my kids. So this is the uh, Amber International um, out of New York. This is a bag full of uh, little pieces of amber. And it's uh, kind of hard to tell what it is, but inside the amber, once you get this polished, you can actually see little insects, not in all of them, but in some of them, I think even in that one right there, there's gonna be um, something because I can actually see it already inside of that one so what you do is you take you wash them off and then you just polish these things up and you look inside of them to see if there's anything in them and you get little spiders little uh um mosquitoes praying mantis i know were found i know the praying mantis are worth like gosh i want to say the guy was saying like a thousand dollars that there's a praying mantis found in one of these things and they're not going to be big obviously they're going to be a little praying mantis that was in there a little spider in there Spiders are pretty uh, sought after and whatnot, so it's kind of a neat little thing just to, to do. But uh, again, these are untreated amber pieces that you can look through yourself. It's kind of like a grab bag. They sell pieces that they've already found insects in. Um, one of these could be fifteen to, you know, like I said, up to a thousand dollars if you find some nice. So otherwise, straight from the mine, you can get these pieces and then polish them yourself and see if there's anything in them and have your own little collection. So. Thought that was kind of nice that he actually just ended up giving me that. Thought that was pretty cool. All right, let's get into some of the couple other mining things. Um, I was gonna pull these out. I'll go ahead and pull them out. This actually came from the uh, Shingle Canyon, and it was in Silver City, New Mexico, and they had a lot of mines there. But in the in the mines. When miners used to go in to know who actually was in the in the in the workings in the tunnels, they would actually have miner tags, and that's what these are—just little tags that were punched. So any time that the miner would go into the mine, he would actually remove it from the little tag over on, say, on the left, and he would basically state that he went into the mine by placing it onto another hangar, saying that that employee, employee 162, or Miner number 71 was in the mine. And so if they ever had like a collapse, they had a, anything happen in the mine, maybe shift change or whatnot, they would know that all the miners came out. And uh, so it was almost like a modern day 
safety protocol that they had in the mines early on. So I thought those were kind of cool. I never had any of those, so went ahead and picked those up. So something neat just to share with you guys. All right. Um, I did acquire some um, mineral specimens, so I will show you this one next. And this is actually a, a native copper piece that came out of the, uh, the new Cor Cor Cornelian pit. It's a huge pit down in Pima County, Arizona. And again, most of my collections I try to keep just specific from Arizona. So this is out of the ex-VJ Hoffman collection. I uh, got this from a, a group called Shannon and Sons. And this is just a, a large copper piece that was mined as is. So this is straight out of the mine, natural copper nugget. And uh, it's quite neat. Kind of rotate it around here so you can see all the characteristics of it. Uh, you'll notice in here you've got the host rock that came out of the mine itself. And uh, that's kind of a neat piece just to either maybe leave at an angle or... Uh, maybe I'll stand it up later on, try to figure out how I want to present that in the case. But just a really nice copper specimen. I like copper pieces. I have some really rare ones from Arizona. And then obviously the ones that came out of the new Cornelian pit, like this one here out of Pima, uh, there was a lot of specimens that came out of there. So it's just really cool and amazing how even though they were really after the metals, and they would have really been sought after to get just this and because this is so close to being a natural um, copper that they would have, uh, you know, spared and saved this for collectors versus just throwing it into the, the leach ponds or the acid pits to to just get the metal out of it. So and chances are they probably the mining company made more money off of a specimen like this than they would have at just the, the raw weight of the, the copper itself. So there's that piece, kind of a neat piece. And jumping through the bag here. All right. Um, I don't know if my in my last videos I've shared this or not. Um, a really big sucker for greens and blues. So hopefully this color is coming out because it's a, a really a dark blue. This actually is azurite. This came out of the coal shaft in Bisbee, Arizona. And I'll kind of just rotate it around so you can kind of see. But really, really neat blues in there. And that would have been the backside that was actually faceted or put, you know, not faceted, but up against the rock, rock wall of sorts. And they just plucked it right off. And there's your specimen. So really, really neat crystals of azurite out of the coal shaft again out of bisbee most of your busy bisbee specimens are going to be really dark like this uh the really bright bright blues that are coming out now are usually going to be out of china whatnot but that's a really basically a prime example of azurite so not only did i find that one i thought that was pretty neat <clears throat> ran into another one here and this one actually has a combination. A lot of times when you find azurite, you're also going to find um, malachite, which is going to be in a green. So here's another specimen. This actually came a little bit north from this mine. This one, again, this was Bisbee. This came out of Miami. So this was Miami, Arizona. This was out of the Sleeping Beauty mine where a lot of amazing turquoise came out of it. This one, the crystals are a little bit larger, so you can see you got a little bit more reflection coming off, and then the greens are going to be the malachites that you're going to see in there. So this could have been something easily as right after malachite or uh, just a pseudo between the two mineral specimens. But oftentimes, when guys, when you find minerals out in mines, and you're if you start finding azurites, I think chrysocolla and malachite, which are your greens and blues, you're usually going to find copper really you can find specimens like this in the mines or in the tailing piles so when i go to old mines in arizona and i know based on the research that i've done that they have this type of material i know that there's going to be something like this potentially too so just an overall really really cool specimen i like when it rotates around and all those little uh natural flat spots of the crystals after they've formed and terminated that they uh reflect all that light so Really, really nice piece there. And again, that one was the azurite out of the, mostly azurite out of the Sleeping Beauty mine in Miami, Arizona. 
All right, still going along here. Getting a few more things out of the bucket so I can show it to you. <clears throat> These ones I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to unroll a little bit. This one I'll just go ahead and show you. I'm not gonna pull this out of the case. So this is actually, if it, you know, it looks like just a maybe a regular rock and you can see that it's a, it's a slice. Yeah, you know what, I'll go ahead and pull this out. Give me just a second, guys. Most of you, I think, uh, maybe are aware that I'm into Arizona meteorites. I hunted for Arizona meteorites starting back in 2008. And uh, ma mainly I was prospecting for gold and ended up getting into a place that had gold. But then we started finding uh, stones. And we couldn't figure out why these stones were sticking to our magnets. So we'd yank them off and we'd throw them in the bushes. And then we'd detect some more and we'd find more of them. We thought they were just what we called hot rocks with metal detecting. And lo and behold, it turned out that someone actually did the research and found out that they were actually meteorites. So meteorites are actually really, I'm not going to say common, but they're really easier to find in Arizona than maybe most um, places, or I would say maybe primor primarily the Southwest just because of the dry climate. So, okay, that's what this is. Now, what this is is a slice off of a uh, a main mass piece. So... This particular stone, now if I rotate it around, you're going to see all those like little reflections in there. And what those reflections are, are little pieces of iron and nickel that are embedded inside the meteorite itself. So for any, you know, person just walking through the desert would see a rock, and you can maybe see the edge of the rock here. It just looks like maybe any other iron-looking rock out in the desert here, and... But when you slice these bad boys open or you get really close, you can actually see the iron nodules sticking out of the top. So you can see like right there, really close iron speck sticking out of the top. So there's a good chance if you look this stone over when you when you picked it up, and uh, that might be another giveaway too because the weight's going to be a lot heavier than a regular rock of its size because you've got the iron nickel content that makes this up. So you have so much of that reflective material in there that this is a high iron. It's going to be known as a as an H5 meteorite just because of the the amount of iron content in it. And uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. This is actually an L. So this actually this is an L6. So this one is actually a low iron content. So see, I still have more learning to do myself, guys, in the meteorite world of things. So this is the Palo Verde mine. This is a um, slice of a piece found from 2004. And it weighs 125 grams. So just a little piece of uh, that I haven't had in my collection that I was uh, going after. And uh, there you go. Let me know if you have any questions on any meteorites. Here's another one that I did not acquire. I just have sitting here. This is another slice here. You can actually see the, the content. This is another L as well because it's such a limited amount of uh, all those little iron pieces inside of there. You can see the top has a nice black crust on it, but then all the pieces inside of there. And look at the difference with that, though, guys. So here's three different meteorites I'll show you. You can see this, the difference. Uh, this one's more of a gray. This one's actually from Holbrook, Arizona. And this one's from the desert and the west part of Arizona. And then here's a real small one called Griffith Wash. And it's a small slice, and you can see it's kind of, it's actually from the same area, I would say, as this one. And it's kind of got some of the same colors, if you will. But there was only one of these stones, of this guy, of Griffith Wash, there was only one of those stones found of the whole meteorite. As to where ones like this, you can find, you know, maybe a couple, you know, handfuls. And then you get into this one, where there was thousands of stones found. Um, so this one happens to be rare than this one and that one just because the overall amount of material available so let me know if you have any interest in that guys i can show you more of that and then i have these so this is another example of meteorites as a whole and let me pull them out of the bag here these are all individually wrapped and so there was another meteorite strewn field is what it's called when there's more stones found from a particular area and this is called Mojave Mountains that this stone was found in. A gentleman, I believe by the name of Mike, found these. And 
there was a lot of these little specimen, little stones all over the place. And he was going around finding them all. And he really cleaned up. He was using a metal detector. Him and a, I think a hunting partner really got in and cleaned up the whole area. So he was the only one that was able to acquire these pieces. And you can see parts of it broke off after it impacted the ground from high up. And, you know, probably couldn't find the pieces together where they went together or whatnot. But that's considered an individual meteorite stone. And just like I said, it looks like a, a regular, maybe a regular rock, but if you were to slice this open, and I can't really get a good look here, but you would really see little specks of iron or nickel, just like you did on the other stone that I showed you guys. So I got quite a few, to, a few of those. I got to get all these kind of pulled out anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and pull these out and just show them to you. Um, this is really common to have just these little pea sizes. And uh, I don't know how much of this material is going to be available. So I found another dealer from Arizona that was selling these. And I thought I would go ahead and jump on these when I could because I'm going to keep the most of them for my collection. But I am going to probably turn and sell a couple of them later on. So just because overall, the more collectors that get into this, they do tend to go up in value. And I think they're, I think they're worth it. So check that out um i think for the most part that's pretty much it guys um i did get some books and whatnot um but i just wanted to do a quick video to show you my haul um i i hope mo many of you have already uh gave a thumbs up on the video of the denver show all together if you've never been to a gem and mineral show um I, there's something there for everybody i think everybody can find joy out of out of going to those shows the next big one is uh, at the beginning of next year. So pretty much done for all my gem and mineral stuff, I believe, until January of 20. And I look forward to taking you guys along for that one too. So let me know what you guys think of these this haul. And I look forward to uh, sharing more videos in the future. Catch you guys later.